Hey guys, I uh, just got back home here in DC after voting to uh, pass the legislation that would send more funding to small businesses. It's interesting the way that they uh, broke up the voting because of the coronavirus uh, pandemic, because of social distancing and physical distancing. Um, they had, I think it was about 20 people uh, per group had a 10 minute uh, window to go in and cast their votes. So I was in group number three, um, three different entrances. So everyone is not all converging on the same entrance. Uh, there are many different voting machines on the house floor. Uh, so people going in and using different voting machines and then going out of two, two different exits to make sure that, um, no one was congregating uh, together in, in one group. So um, interesting, very interesting. Normally with votes that take place, the very first vote, there's a 15 minute window. So all 435 members of Congress need to go to the House floor and vote within that 15 minute window. And then the subsequent votes in that series after that first 15 minute vote, usually you have five minutes per vote, so five minutes for everybody to cast their vote, unless it's an amendment uh, where, where you have two minutes, two minutes per amendment. Uh, so now with this vote, um, I left, I went in, voted and left, uh, but for, for another hour after my group was finished voting, uh, or an hour and a half actually, uh, people were still voting. So I think the vote may actually still, still be going on now as we speak. Uh, I expect it to pass. And this is going to send some overdue, highly necessary dollars to those of you who may be small business owners or those in your family, people you know, people who applied uh, for this, but either didn't get a response or were told, hey, um, you know, the money ran out. Uh, I think the other important development is that even as Shake Shack and Ruth's Chris made headlines, there were a number of other uh, businesses that are not small businesses that somehow were able to get millions of dollars out of this program, even as many small businesses, if they got funding, only got a few thousand bucks. Uh, Trump administration, I believe, said yesterday that they will mandate that these businesses who exploited some loophole um, that are not small businesses must return that money back into the PPP program to make sure that it actually goes uh, towards the small businesses that it was intended uh, intended to go to. Um, last night, last night we had, a, it was 10 o'clock here in DC, four o'clock in Hawaii. We had a fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, telephone town hall. We had three individuals from the IRS on the line who were available to answer questions from people. And um, it was, it was really, really great because I know that so many people, uh, we, we've been getting very detailed questions from people about, well, hey, I filed this in 2017, filed that in 2018, or my son or my father or mother did this or that, or how old um, does a child have to be under the CARES Act uh, to be claimed as a dependent to get you the extra $500 per dependent? Uh, it's a lot of really detailed questions, and it was great for... Uh, our constituents just to be able to have direct access to people in the IRS who could answer that question. Um, and that's, that's exactly what it was. It was really, really productive. And um, uh, yeah, it, it was great. Um, looking at some of your comments here. Um, find out about us here in Puerto Rico. OC Cruz is saying the government still hasn't given any of us the stimulus cash. Many of us are going crazy. I have not heard about, uh, I have not heard any concerns about that, but I will, I will definitely look into that. Whether you're Puerto Rico, Guam, American Samoa, the U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, you, <laughs> you are U.S. citizens. You should have uh, started to get the economic stimulus payments just like everybody else. Um, but I, I will definitely check into that and post something or, or uh, get the word back out to you guys. Um, one thing that I, I'm really disappointed about is that today, if you watch the live stream I did a few days ago, um, 
Today we were supposed to be voting on a uh, proxy voting measure that would allow people like those of us from Hawaii, the Pacific, the West Coast, people who are immune compromised, people who have a little bit of a harder time um, getting to Washington, D.C., to designate a proxy to vote on our behalf uh, because of some, I don't know, some differences. This as of yesterday afternoon, it was supposed to be on the voting schedule today. As of last night, it was yanked. And instead, they're appointing, I think, a six person bipartisan working group to figure out how to resolve the issue of this issue of, of uh, creating increased health risk and exposure because of this pandemic, and yet still be able to make sure that Congress is able to pass uh, legislation like the one that we voted for today. So I don't know what that means. I don't know when they're going to come up with, um, uh, I don't know when they're going to come up with, uh, something that will be voted on or recommendations all was, was rushed through a bit last night. Uh, frankly, it's something, this conversation between Democrats and Republicans should have happened already in the last several weeks. I, I don't know why this is something that just came up at the last, anyway. I, I don't have all the information on that, but it, I think it's ridiculous that we have Congress here today and we're not doing anything to provide this option. It's an option for those members of Congress who cannot physically make it back. This would make it so that they can still represent their constituents and make sure that their voice is heard if they can't physically uh, be here. So um, Alan Geddon is asking, how is Hawaii doing for cases bad or good? Um, Hawaii is, it, it's hard to say. I think today I just got notice of four new cases. Um, it kind of seems to fluctuate between relatively low numbers, two or four or five, and we'll have a day where there'll be 20 or 27, uh, and then it goes back down. I, I think these numbers, like they they may seem encouraging, and, and I hope they are, uh, I think a lot of people really are following the guidance and the precautions of staying at home and um, the physical distancing and, and uh, sanitizing everything that may have been in contact with, uh, I don't know, outside exposure. But it's, it's just hard. And I know other places are, are struggling with the same thing is how do you really know if you're not doing the kind of mass testing that needs to be done? How do you really know how good or how bad you're doing. Uh, so um, th this is this continues to be an issue and a challenge. Uh, like I said the other day, um, the governor of Maryland, he is a Republican governor. His wife happens to be Korean. They got on the phone and they started calling businesses in, in South Korea saying, hey, we need tests. You guys are testing people. And I think they got something like 500,000 tests uh, in that they purchased from South Korea for the people of Maryland. But it's this kind of uh, outside the box thinking that we really need. Uh, I want to say hi to my friend Jared Budinsky. Uh, we went to the MP uh, Captain's Career Course together out in, um, oh gosh, Fort Lost in the Woods, Fort Leonard Wood. Good to see you, Jared. Hope you and your family are doing well. Um, Let's see, somebody's saying, what do you think of Congress taking a break until May 4th during the crisis? Uh, I, I think that there's a few considerations here. Number one is, I can tell you, uh, I and my team have, even though we are working from home, like a lot of people are, uh, we are doing committee work. We are uh, having briefers come in and brief us. Um, and we are uh, continuing to put legislation forward. We are continuing to uh, do the work that goes into on the Armed Services Committee, the National Defense Authorization Act, um, except it's all being done by distance, obviously. Everyone's teleworking. So there's a lot of things that are going on both that have to pertain to legislation in Washington, D.C., but of course that have to pertain to uh, that, that pertains to doing the work in our local districts in helping our constituents during this time of crisis and during this time of need. So, um, you know, I can, it, it's because Congress is not in session doesn't mean Congress isn't working, first of all. 
Uh, second of all, I think given this crisis, given the fact that frankly, people who don't need to travel shouldn't be traveling, um, the exposure to members of Congress to all convene here in Washington, D.C. is not only to members of Congress, it's to all the people that they are in contact with when they go back home to their district. So really, when you think about the the uh, the health care risk of bringing in House and Senate, 535 people from all 50 states, plus the territories across the country together and convening in one space. Um, look, that's a recipe for, for disaster, given this environment and how highly infectious this virus is. So this is where there needs to be uh, action to figure out, okay, like the proxy voting, how do we figure this out so we can still cast our votes, Congress can still pass legislation, committee work can still be done, uh, witnesses can still be called in um, without putting uh, individuals and uh, their families, their constituents, their communities further uh, at further risk. This is a temporary situation. It is a temporary situation. We don't yet know exactly what the path to recovery looks like, but this is a temporary situation. And I and uh, my team, we are solely focused on doing the work, doing the work for my district uh, people in Hawaii and, um, and the country. So that's what's going on. Uh, I'm waiting to see uh, proxim Rick is saying proxy vote should be only as needed if emergency vote is required. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The, the whole proxy vote resolution is a temporary one given the emergency of the pandemic that we're dealing with now. It, was not, uh, it actually would not allow it to be used under normal circumstances. So um, Brighton Charrier is asking if this is a recorded vote. Yes, it is a recorded vote. That's why I'm here. All right, guys, I got to go. I actually have a call with uh, my constituents, uh, a local Rotary Club in Kona on the island of Hawaii. Uh, so I am going to say goodbye for now and get on the phone with them. I think it's really cool that the Rotary Club is continuing their regular meetings, but they're doing it on Zoom. So like so many other groups, uh, maintaining these connections, even though they may be by computer or by phone, I think is really, really important. So I'm looking forward to talking to them. Bye, guys. Aloha. Have a nice day.